Hello, my name is Joseph Sharon, and I would like to speak to you about the Northern Sung Dynasty root kiln. The root kiln operated from 1086 to 1126. Now, there were two emperors during the operation of the kiln. Uh, the first emperor, Zung, he reigned from 1086 to 1100. The second emperor, Hu Zung, reigned from 1100 to 1126. Now, the root kiln was the very first kiln to in history of in the history of China that actually produced wares exclusively for the emperor and his court. They had been commissioned by the emperor himself to produce wares for himself and his court exclusively. And that was the first time in history that had happened. And they were also the uh, probably one of the uh, they were manufacturing probably the finest wares, one of the finest wares in Chinese history. Uh, and uh, I've, I have these wares here. These are all Northern Song Dynasty root kiln wares. I've put them in three categories. And the first category would be the wares that were sold to wealthy merchants. The second category would be tribute wares that were actually given as tribute to the emperor and his court. And the third category is wares that were uh, imperial wares that were commissioned by the emperor himself and commissioned to produce wares exclusively for the emperor and his court. Now let's start out with the merchant wares they're very finely potted they have glaze inside and out they're smooth to the touch they have a fine crackle uh, on the piece and uh, the crackle varies from piece to piece some have very sporadic or very little crackle others have more dense crackle and occasionally a piece will come through the kiln and it won't have any crackle whatsoever and they're considered very rare um, then they also have sperm marks on the base these tiny uh, sesame seed size and shape sperm marks that uh, if you look inside the sperm mark you can see the color of the uh, biscuit that they used it's a cream colored biscuit that they used in the manufacture of these pieces. Now these are some of the um, merchant wares in my collection, wealthy merchant wares. And occasionally you, you'll have a piece, may, may have a piece that has uh, uh, impressed or uh, incised decorations on them and these were uh, considered to be rare and uh, a piece sold uh, in Hong Kong a rue kiln piece sold in Hong Kong in 2012 uh, at a Sotheby's auction the piece sold for 27 million dollars and that piece had a flaw on the inside edge of the piece. Now, flawed pieces uh, would have been been sold to the population. They wouldn't have been sold to the wealthy merchants. They would have been sold to the population at that time. They would take them out and put the flawed pieces and sell them to the population at, at a much cheaper price. And these wares were uh, quite expensive during the Northern Song, Song period. And uh, you had to be somewhat wealthy to be able to purchase one of these pieces. Now, over here to the 
the uh, tribute wares. Now these were given as tribute to the emperor and his court. Now these wares are similar to the merchant wares, except these wares were um, uh, have have these fire gilted bands on them, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, this this particular piece has has impressed lotus leaves on it, and uh, but they have the fine crackle. They had they're glazed inside and out. They have uh, the spur marks, the the uh, sesame seed size and shape spur marks, and you can see the color of the biscuit that they used. It's a cream color biscuit. Um, and they're smooth to the touch and they have these which makes them quite different the fire gilted bands which uh, are heavily corroded with uh, cuprate and malachite now cuprate is a reddish color and malachite is a greenish color and if you get a loop you can actually see uh, what happens is the cuprate will grow first uh, in the corrosion process and malachite will grow right on top of the cuprate uh, so it's like a it's it's almost like well it's layered on top of the cuprate the malachite so you'll see reddish and the and the green growing top of growing on top of the reddish and this cannot be uh, reproduced it only happens in nature and uh, it's impossible to reproduce this this type of corrosion and uh, if you get a loop you can actually look in there and you can see the red and then the green actually growing on top of the red so you need a loop and you can actually see that now these wares had several colors. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Celadon. This is a Sky After Rain. Some of the pieces had uh, different names to them. Uh, the Chinese would give them different names. This is Moonlight White. This is Olive Green. This is Red. This is uh, Robin Egg Blue. Uh, ashy after burning, and this is a uh, an aqua blue. Now, I don't know if I mentioned that, but some of the wares only have the the banding, the gilt band on the rim only. Uh, this is an aqua blue. This is a sky blue. Now. This piece is, has a mark on it, and it's very well done, the mark. Uh, and it says, uh, uh, Fen Wang. Fen Wang means, in the ancient language, it means uh, uh, tribute to the ruler. So this was given tribute to the emperor or the ruler, um, uh, and, it, and it proves that these uh, pieces with the bands were, were the tribute pieces that they were given to the emperor in his court. And this is a pale celadon. And these are the tribute wares. Now, during the second emperor's reign, he had been receiving these tribute wares, him and his court had been receiving these tribute wares, and he was not pleased with the tribute wares he was receiving. Not only was he receiving tribute wares from the uh, root kiln, he was also receiving from several other kilns. And the root kiln wares were very opulent and uh, quite flamboyant, uh, they have with the gilt bands and the different colors and uh, they're beautiful pieces artistically. They're, they're beautiful, wonderful pieces. Uh, but he was a, a modest man. He was an artist 
and a uh, musician, and he saw things differently. He saw beauty in uh, simplicity, and he wanted uh, uh, one of the kilns to to make wares for him exclusively for him and his court and no longer wanted to receive these opulent wares that he was receiving from the uh, different kilns. Uh, so he, he commissioned the root kiln because they were probably producing some of the finest wares uh, out of any of the kilns in, in uh, the Northern Sung Dynasty period. So he, he apparently had some connection with the Korean Kor Koryo dynasty wears, the Celadon wears there, because he chose a Celadon color uh, for the wares. And he actually worked along with the root kiln to develop these wares. Uh, and the, these wares are the actual imperial uh, wares that were made exclusively for the emperor and his court. Now they have a fine cracked ice crackle. Uh, they have a texture to them and on the base they're not uh, the actual foot rings are not glazed, so they were fired flat in the kiln, so they don't have the spur marks. And they were fired flat in the kiln, and they, they didn't glaze the foot rings, so they wouldn't stick to the kiln. And they're glazed inside and out. They have that fine crackle, and each, each piece has very similar crackle. They're not like the other pieces. These are very similar in the crackle. Uh, in the glaze, and uh, they uh, they have this texture, and the texture was created by putting ground up crushed agate stone in the mix, and they they ground the agate stone down into a powder form, and this powder form uh, you can actually it left traces of tiny, tiny, tiny flakes. And you can actually, with a good 20 power loop or better, you can actually see, preferably a microscope, you can actually see traces of the uh, agate stone in the glaze. Because when the light hits it in a certain angle, it will shoot off a little, little light, a reflection and uh, it's a jewel so it reflects light and you'll see that and you'll know that that's where the flake is they're very tiny but that proves that the ag crushed agate stone was put into these pieces and not these other pieces any of these other wares only exclusively for the imperial wares and they put it in there to give the the, the wares texture but they have this uh, uh, cracked ice crackle. They're, uh, they have a, the, this texture to them. They're unglazed foot rings. Uh, the actual biscuit color was a grayish color and then it turned brown after firing. And Sometimes the wares will have a mark, scratch, a very understated mark, scratched into the, the uh, base. And this is a, a tribute to uh, Wa. Uh, it's Fen Wa. And that means tribute for China. Or it could possibly mean tribute for uh, a sacred mountain, Wa, uh, that was in the Northern Song Dynasty at that time. It, it's in China now. Uh, but uh, it could be a tribute to that too. But I think it's a uh, uh, tribute for China. 
uh, in the old language. And these pieces are very refined, understated, and modest. And the emperor, being uh, uh, a modest person himself, he saw beauty in these pieces like that the average person may not see until you learn what he was trying to teach us. That uh, each piece uh, had its own character. And even with the flawed pieces, like this piece would, it was didn't fire as well as some of these other pieces, but it didn't matter to the emperor because each piece had its own character. And this, they didn't glaze it all the way down the foot and uh, it shrunk a little bit under it didn't matter it had its own character and each, he saw each piece as being beautiful in their own right almost like human beings uh, with all their flaws they were beautiful and uh, and these are the actual imperial wares that the emperor Huzang commissioned the root kiln to produce for him, exclusively him and his court. And when they started producing these wares, they stopped producing these wares. They only exclusively made wares for him and his court, exclusively, and that was it. And his court was pretty large. He had five or 6,000 people in his court. And uh, so they had plenty of work. Um, but these are the wares, and these wares, you can actually see the crushed agate stone in the, in the glaze if you get a good loop. And that pretty much sums it up. Um, I think I've covered everything I need to cover right now. Uh, if you choose to, you can go to my... Uh, website at ChineseMasterpieces.com and uh, I'd like to thank you for watching the video and good luck collecting.